In this video, we're going to take a look at the Danielson original fly reel. Now, I get asked all the time on the river, what is this reel and how do I get one? So these are Swedish reels. Uh, as far as I know, no one in the U.S. retails them or sells them in their shops, which makes them kind of hard to find. Uh, I did order this one from Sweden oh, probably a decade or so ago. This is the dry fly model. Uh, the name implies it's only used for dry flies. That's not necessarily true. You can use it for anything, nymphs, small streamers. Um, but I do use this for dry flies. This is kind of my, my dry fly reel. Reason for that being is it's really, really good on light tippet. You know, your 6X, your 5X, things like that. Main reason is it has extremely low startup inertia when you initially tug um, on the line. A lot of our other modern reels here in the United States have clickers and carbon drags. But all those reels, when you initially pull on the spool, it takes a little bit of, uh, of tug to get it going, to make it break free of the clicker and the drag. This reel essentially doesn't have that. It runs on friction, and you can adjust it so that it's frictionless, pretty much. It just sits here and free spools. Now, that's not necessarily ideal when you're actually fishing. You need to tighten it down a little bit, um, or else it'll just backlash or... Uh, overrun, whatever you want to call it, the line will just make a mess. So you got to tighten down your thumb screw here, which applies pressure onto the spool via these little ball bearings. And then what you can do is once you have it adjusted and it doesn't free spool, you can palm the reel. So it has this rim that goes all the way around the reel, seamless, and that is essentially your drag. Uh, and that's one of the fun parts to this reel. It's very similar to like a click and paw style reel from back in the day. Um, except it has this extremely large arbor, which is the reason that I really uh, like this reel, is you can get a lot of line in with each crank of the reel. So it's kind of a modern take on a classic reel. Now it runs on those ball bearings, like I said, there's three on the back and three on the front. And the cool thing about these ball bearings is they're pretty much maintenance free. Nothing can really get trapped or um, caught inside of them. If anything, a little bit of dirt sometimes gets along the rim of the reel and then it rolls up in between the ball bearing and the frame. And all you got to do is just dunk it in the water and give it a quick little spin and all the dirt's gone. So I've had this reel now for about a decade and I've done essentially nothing to it. And it's still just as smooth as the day that I bought it. Now it's pretty much silent. All that you hear is the ball bearings turning. So that's another neat thing about this reel. If you're into stealth, you don't like the noise of a lot of the other reels out there. And I realize you can take the clickers out of them, but this one doesn't even have a spot for a clicker. It doesn't even come with it. So I'll hold it up to the microphone here and you can kind of hear the, hear the bearings. And that's essentially the only noise you're gonna hear from this reel. Now it's extremely simple. There's really only three pieces to this reel. You've got your front bearing piece here, then you have your spool and your frame. Now this frame has a cage that goes all along the reel. That gives the, the spool uh, area something to kind of sit inside of, and it also makes it a lot more durable than just a, f a frameless, I should say, uh, frame or rimless frame. We're not really used to that here in the United States. A lot of our reels are so concerned about weight, they machine all that out. But with this reel, it's a little bit more essential just because it gives something for this spool lip to sit on top of. Then to put it back together, you simply just put the spool on, line up your front bearings and tighten down your thumb screw and that's it. There's nothing else to it. Um, I imagine you probably eventually need to lube up those bearings once in a while. I've never done so. It seems to be just fine uh, without any maintenance, but I'm sure if you use it a lot, uh, you probably need to do a little bit of maintenance on it. But this is the my favorite reel in my collection. I'm kind of a real guy. They're like jewelry for me. Um, so. If you're the same as me and you really like reels and you're looking for something different, um, they're definitely worth the wait to get from Sweden. They have several different models. They have one smaller than this, I think called the Nymph. Um, they have a couple larger ones as well that I know a lot of Atlantic salmon guys or steelhead guys use. Um, but here in Colorado, I pretty much use the dry fly. Um, but I imagine if you have a three weight or something like that, the Nymph would also be a, a good size for that. And that is the Danielson fly reel from Sweden.